For some modelers, the search for the perfect nipper is an endless endeavor. That magic tool that will reduce this screw to a batch of perfectly trimmed parts. And while it will provide you with a lifelong activity, it isn't going to get that model built. The fact is no nipper or sprue cutter is really able to get you to the nirvana of an always perfectly trimmed part. We have to recognize that we're really at the mercy of the mold designers and the technology available to a particular model manufacturer. Unless the attachment between the part and the sprue or gate is designed in a conscientious manner, we're going to need to spend some quality time with a blade, file, or abrasive. However, on those occasions when the stars align perfectly, a good pair of plastic nippers can make removing a part off the sprue a much more pleasant experience. Welcome to Scale Model Workshop. In this episode, I want to take a look at a few of the many cutters and nippers that are available. Certainly, you can use a variety of tools and methods to remove parts from a sprue, but there are some dedicated cutters that I think deserve a place in your kit. As designs go, there are two basic forms of construction. Stamped sheet metal with a scissors type joint and forged with an overlap type joint. While I've bought and tested a number of the so-called quality stamped sheet metal types, I've never found a pair that even came close to the performance of a well-made forged type. The joints have always been a bit sloppy so they don't close reliably making the cut less predictable. And because there are much better alternatives, I'm not including them in this discussion. Another point worth mentioning is to distinguish between sprue cutters and nippers, because we generally use the terms interchangeably. But sprue cutters are generally larger and heavier so that they're able to easily cut through the actual sprue or runner without being damaged. Most of the small cutters that we like to use for trimming off small parts are not as stout. And some of the smallest of these types sometimes come with warnings against damage if you use them on too thick of a material. So if you find yourself needing to cut thicker plastic, you'd be wise to purchase something larger and more functional. These are a relatively inexpensive pair that I purchased from a jewelry supply many years ago, and they're flush cutting just like their smaller cousins. Flush cutting refers to the outside face being ground so that the jaws meet together to form a flush surface that leaves a relatively straight cut that's fairly flush with the surrounding area, as opposed to a traditional diagonal cutter that leaves a much more pronounced pinch cut. In addition to a flush outside face, some nippers are made with only one sharp cutting jaw and one flat surface jaw. The theory here is that the jaw with the flat surface stabilizes the material while the sharpened blade does the actual cutting. This is opposed to having both jaws cut, which might tend to pinch the material more. It's a nice theory, but I've found that in the real world use, both designs leave some degree of pinch. How well a nipper cuts through the material is only one characteristic. There are several other factors that you might want to consider when thinking about functionality. How well does the nipper fit in tight spaces? If a nipper has short, stubby jaws, then it becomes hard to get into tight spaces between other parts or the sprue. What's the contour of the outside surface of the jaws? If the outside surfaces of the jaws are flat, then you may have more difficulty getting in close to some parts, whereas nippers that have a slight curve from side to side and are top to bottom can sometimes snuggle in a little closer. But with these, you can sometimes get in a little too close and if the nippers are nice and sharp, you could take a bite out of the part. In this short review, I've selected a half a dozen of the most popular and available nippers that I've found most functional, and I'll briefly go through them. In addition, I have more supplemental information about each one on a separate web page at the link in the video description below. Some of the most popular nippers around are from Tamiya. But it can be a bit confusing because currently there are three different designs and the designs have changed over time. So if you're trying to exactly replace an aging pair, you might not be very successful. First up is the Tamiya 74001 all-around side cutter. It's the most stout of all the nippers that I'm showing and more capable of cutting through the surrounding sprue material. But again, if you're cutting through really thick stuff, reach for a larger pair of sprue cutters. Both jaws are relatively thick, but sharp enough to do a surprisingly good job. 
They have a pronounced curve from side to side, as well as a slight curve from top to bottom, so you can get in nice and close. If I could have only one pair in my kit, these would be the ones. The Tamiya 74035 is a bit smaller than the 74001, and the jaws are thinner with a straight taper to the tip. They curve from side to side, but are flat from top to bottom, and thinner than the 74001. So if you're cutting surrounding sprue, get the material as far as possible into the jaws. These are another very good choice for an all-around nipper. The Tamiya 74123 is a completely different animal. You can tell by the construction that they're made to a different standard. More like a quality jeweler's tool with a European feel. The jaws are much thinner and have a long taper that lets them get into spots that none of the other nippers do. The outside surface has a very slight curve from side to side. These are not for cutting heavy material, but if you want a pair of nippers that can get to any part and do a stellar job of cleanly removing material consistent with the surrounding area, these are the champs and the ones I use most whenever I'm working up next to a part. The Mr. Hobby MT-103 is a nicely turned out nipper. The jaws are extremely thin. A set screw provides an adjustable stop to prevent overstressing the jaws, and the spring is nice and substantial. These nippers do a yeoman-like job. Nothing spectacular, but certainly a substantial cut above the stamped scissors type. One nice feature is that they are supplied with a sturdy protective cover for the jaws. The God Hand SPN120 has sort of become a legend. It's the sharpest of the bunch. It uses a single edge design and an extremely thin, sharp cutting jaw. Depending on the plastic, it can leave a very smooth cut. The thin cutting jaw is easily damaged, so there's a set screw to allow you to adjust the pressure on the blade. And likewise, you shouldn't use these nippers on thick material. While they're the sharpest of the bunch, the stubby, delicate jaws really do limit their use. The Gundam Planet nippers are sort of a bulkier version of the God Hand nippers, and they share the same single edge design. But the execution's a bit hit and miss, and while they cut okay, the general finish and quality control is representative of their country of manufacture. And the first pair I bought for this review is poorly finished and sticks closed despite lubrication. The second pair was much better, but due to the fact that you can't count on what you're going to get, it's hard to recommend these. In using these different nippers, I discovered sharper's not always better. Many times I've seen testers use a piece of cut sprue as the criteria. However, what's important with these more delicate nippers is how cleanly the gate material is removed from the part. Comparing the God Hand SPN120 with the Tamiya 74123, you can see that the non-cutting safe jaw of the GH protrudes a little. So if you cut by seating both edges against the part, you'll get a slight angled cut with an excess of material left at the safe edge. On the other hand, the jaws of the Tamiya 74123 are perfectly flush, with a slight curve from side to side. This allows both jaws to cleave the material flush with the surrounding area. And in fact, because of their curved back, in many situations, especially with small parts and gates, all the Tamiya nippers do a more consistent job of removing material flush with the surrounding area than the flat back nippers. However, I also found that in some parts with very large gates, the God Hand nippers were able to cut through the material virtually flush with the surface, while the Tamiya nipper left more of a tear, which resulted in a bit of a defect. Keep in mind that this performance will vary with the consistency of the plastic, and another reason to have several different nippers to optimize the removal of the gate material and preserve the shape of the part and surrounding detail. Like any tool, for best results you need good technique, but no matter how good the nipper is, it's not a magic wand. And one of my best suggestions is to resist the temptation to try and cut everything as close as possible in one shot with the idea that you're going to save yourself cleanup time. Every kit's different with different plastic, so you need to be a little flexible with your approach. In situations where you don't want to be patching tears, start your cut well away from the part 
and get a feel for the plastic. You may find that you won't be able to get very close to the part at all. Where you have very large gates, it's frequently better to start further out and nibble your way in. When the plastic's extremely brittle, like with clear parts, and depending on how short or thick the gate is, I prefer to remove the parts with a rotary saw blade and carefully finish down the excess with a file or abrasive. If you work with a lot of small parts that are delicately sprued, you know the cleanup can be difficult. Using a nipper like the Tamiya 74123 can save you a lot of headache. Position one jaw against the prominence of the underside of the part you're going to remove, and then guide the cutting jaw into position and snip. If you're using a relatively sharp straight back nipper on a long straight surface, be careful not to allow the tip of the nippers to catch the edge of the part and take out a divot. One way to avoid this is to angle the nipper a bit so that you can seat both jaws against the edge of the part before you cut. Or you can use light pressure and rotate the nippers to create a score around the gate. Another trick when cutting around a panel or door is to work from the underside. Because the edge of the panel generally has a slight taper, the most noticeable area of the outline is the more prominent lower edge, and you want to avoid cutting into it. So I most often cut using the underside as a guide. Here you can see that the attachments flush with the underside, but the top side detail portion has a nice lip that can be used as a guide. Position the lower jaw of the nippers against the lip on the detail side, and adjust the upper jaw of the nipper so it cuts flush with the surrounding line. A good pair of nippers can last you a long time, as long as you're careful to use and store them properly. Don't just toss them into your box to rummage around with your other tools. Resist any urge to use them on metal wire. If you're cutting wire, use a regular wire cutter. Or if you work with piano or steel wire, use a dedicated hard wire cutter. Be mindful where you set them down when working on a model. Don't get caught up in the process. Set the nippers on the instruction sheet. Then later, unwittingly reach for the instructions only to launch your nippers onto the floor. From personal experience, they always land tip first, causing them to become shorter over the years, leaving you to search for another favorite pair, and in the process, starting a small collection upon which you can draw to make a video about nippers. So long for now, and I'll see you next time.